Okay, hi again guys. So now I'm just going to do a quick video to take you through some of the different tools in SketchUp, okay, and what they can do. Okay, so this is just an introduction to the tools that you guys have available. Alright, so first of all I'm going to start with R. Okay, so I'm going to be using shortcuts in this instance because it's really good um, to get used to using the shortcuts because it just makes the whole process much easier. If your computer is not responding to the shortcuts, make sure that in your computer settings, shortcuts are enabled. Okay, so first of all, we're going to start with R. So I'm just going to hit R on my keyboard. And you guys can see here that it has taken me into the pencil with a little rectangle into it. Now SketchUp tries to make sure that the shortcuts and their tools are linked. So R equals rectangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click in my gray space here and drag out. And you can see that I have got a rectangle. Okay, up the top of my screen, you guys should hopefully see a dimensions tab. And as I move my mouse around, the dimensions change. Now I can either click and finish drawing my rectangle and it's just a random size, or if I start again and click and drag out, what I can do is if I hit tab, my dimensions bar becomes highlighted. And what I can do is I can type a measurement. So I can type 3000 comma 2000. And it automatically creates a rectangle that size. Okay. What we can do, we can check that measurement. Okay, so if I hit T on my keyboard, that takes me into my tape measure tool. So I can click on one end of my rectangle and drag it to the opposite end. And you can see either in the measurements tab at the top of my screen or just on my mouse, it tells me that this length is 2000 millimeters or two meters, All right? Now I'm in this tool, but I no longer want to use it. What I can do is hit spacebar and that automatically takes me back into my selection tool. Okay. Which is basically like going back to the beginning, makes it really easy for us. Alrighty, so another tool that is really handy to know, okay, is Q. Now, Q is rotate because R is already taken with the rectangle. Alright, and rotate allows us, obviously, to rotate objects and shapes and lines and things like that. You can see when I move my mouse over the different parts of the shape, they become highlighted blue. And at the moment, my rotate compass is also blue. This means that if I rotate anything, it is going to rotate around the blue vertical axis. Okay, so I'll show you an example. If I click here, you click once to say yes, that's what I want to rotate. You drag out, all right, keeping in line with one of the horizontal axis and say yes, I want to keep it straight. So yes, on green axis, click again. And then I'm going to turn. And as I turn, you can see that a red axis appears, which means I'm turning on the red axis. Okay. Now this is interesting. You can see because this is all one rectangle joined. Okay. It is manipulating the rectangle in a different way. Okay. So what I'm going to do is when I'm happy with where it is, I click once again and that finishes the tool. All right. To make rotation a bit easier, if we want to rotate the whole shape, what we can do is we can click and drag over the whole shape and that selects the whole thing which we know it's selected because it's got a blue line on the outside and a blue face. If you don't want to select that way you can click once on the face or double click to get the face and the lines of the shape. Okay what we can do to this shape is we can create it as a group. So once it's selected I can go edit, make group and you can see now when I select it, the whole thing selects as one, which means now if I try to rotate it, click once to say you want to rotate, drag out to be in line with another colored axis and rotate around, the whole rectangle rotates, not just one line. This is because when you create anything in SketchUp, it all creates as separate entities, okay? Even though there is a whole rectangle here, there is actually one face and four different lines. Okay, so in order to keep shapes together, we need to group them. Okay, once they are grouped, we can manipulate them more easily. 
okay? We may want to move our shape, okay? So in order to move it, M on your keyboard gives you four little arrows. The easiest way to move anything is to grab it by the corner. So grab it by the corner and you can move it around. If you hover over another shape, it will kind of attract like a snap point. And I can see here that it says end point and I can click there and it attaches to this shape. When you're moving, always use the corners to move. It is just much easier, okay, for you guys. Another tool that's really quite useful in SketchUp is the is when you hit F on your keyboard, that is the offset tool. Okay? And this allows you with different shapes that you're using or drawing to create a thickness. Okay? So in order to see how this will work, all right, I'm going to come up here and use my standard views for the first time. Now they look like little pictures of a house, okay? So in order to get to my plan view or the top of my building, I wanna click on the one that looks like a roof. And you guys can see that I've got my rectangle here. All right, still in the F command or offset, what I can do is when I drag my mouse into the center of my shape, you can see a red square appear on the outside line and then inside there is dotted lines, which means that is selected. If I then click and drag in, you can see a smaller rectangle inside be created. This is really helpful for creating things like wall thicknesses when you're creating buildings um, or anything like that. I can again type in the measurement. So if I hit tab 200, you can see that it has created a thickness on my rectangle. Okay, and again, these are all separate parts. All right, and if I click on them, they all select separately. All right, now that I have a shape, I may wanna add some color to it or some texture. So to do that, if I hit B on my keyboard, that brings up my bucket tool or my paint bucket tool. There's a whole range of colors to choose from. All right, and I can choose one and click, okay? There is also textures available. So if you're on a Mac in the brick section, it looks like a brick. These are all the patterns that I have available. So I could go maybe tile. And you guys can see I have different tiles available. If I click on one, I can then paint bucket into the center. Okay. There are lots to choose from here. So you can add textures and colors to your model as well. All right. You may not necessarily want to use a rectangle shape. You may want to use a circle. So C will take you straight into the circle tool. And you can click and drag out to create your circle. Okay. And at the top in the measurements, you can see the radius is there. So the radius is the length of the red line as you can currently see it on the screen. So I'm going to type 2,500, oh, which was a little big. Okay, so now that's overlapping with my shape. So this, my original rectangle. So that means that this part has become its own separate entity. I can undo that by doing Command Z on my keyboard. So C again, and I can drag out, and this time I'm gonna write 1500, and there's my circle. I can also use the offset tool with this flat shape as well. Okay, so C enables you to draw circles. All right, L, okay, if I wanna divide my circle up, I could draw lines coming out to make it like a pie chart. So L allows you to draw lines, it takes you to the pencil tool, okay. And if you don't want a rectangle or a circle, you may want an arc, okay. So A takes you into the arc tool, and if you click on one side and then another and drag your mouse up or down, you can see an arc is created. And in our measurements at the top, we can tell it the bulge we want it to have, which is really just like the radius. So I can type 800, enter, and then there my arc has been created, okay? You'll notice that the rectangle tool and the circle tool allows you to create whole shapes, 
whereas the arc only allows you to create a single line. Another tool that's really helpful in SketchUp, which is great, is P, which is the push-pull tool. This allows you to turn the shapes that we have them now from 2D to 3D, okay? So what I'm gonna do is come back up to my standard views. And at the moment I'm on the top of my house or the plan view. What I wanna actually do is click on the angled view of a house and it's called isometric. And you can see my shapes from a different angle here. Now what I can do is still being in the push pull tool, I'm going to hover my mouse over the center rectangle of my larger rectangle with the tiles on it and you can see it becomes blue and spotted which means it is highlighted. If I click and drag up I can create a height okay or if I prefer a swimming pool type situation okay and what I'm going to do is I can again in the measurements tab at the top I can type how tall I want my prism to be so I can go could go 3000 and it becomes really big okay you can use your trackpad to zoom in and out if you want to okay that's up to you or you could use the zoom tools in your large tool set here so there's just zoom which allows you to click and zoom there is zoom extents which takes you to the outside of your model there is zoom back to what you were just in and then there's this zoom tool which allows you to click and drag over what you want to zoom into and it will take you into that part of your model. eventually. That's what it's meant to do anyway. So that's a basic introduction to the tools that are available to you in SketchUp. Okay, have a play with them. I urge you to experiment with all these different tools. That's the best way for you guys to learn how to use SketchUp. Okay, so just to recap, we've got R for drawing rectangles, Q for rotating, M for moving, T for tape measure, F for offset, B for bucket, C for circle, L for line, spacebar for select arrow, a for arc and P for push-pull. Alrighty, thanks guys.